you are able. Welcome to worship at Lindale Lutheran Church on this 20th Sunday after Pentecost. Welcome also to those who are joining us online this morning. As always, I am so glad to be here and I'm glad that each of you are here. I am Pastor Cheryl, blessed to be serving exactly where I believe God would have me be in this day and this time. Are there any announcements anyone has? Jennifer. Well, two announcements. First, um, I'm gonna send you around the Sunday morning uh, worship duty clipboard, please sign up. Now that we're back in the church, we definitely need everybody to participate. And also, um, hopefully you have a lantern by email, or there's public copies out here for hard. If you look at the last page, there's an event, the Trap or Treat, that will be at the end of the month. It is a Western Virginia Chamber of Commerce, of which we are a member of the event. And really, you can read it out, well, but I'm asking from our congregation is we need vehicles for the trick and 
Thank you. And I know that the youth age 4th through 7th just got an email this morning probably about an event to do some planning around that that's coming up next Sunday. So watch for that. And senior high, watch for an announcement coming your way as well for a youth group time. Um, be sure that we're passing the welcome pads around. Um, not only is it nice to see who you're worshiping with, but should we ever need it, that would be an important tool for contact tracing with the COVID numbers being what they are. Um, there is a Christian Ed team meeting Tuesday night at 6 o'clock. Anyone who would like to come and be a part of that are welcome. Um, I think... Take a look at the announcements in your bulletin, and Debbie has an announcement. I, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who came to welcome yesterday. In the spirit of all things new, we tried something new and had a women's a welcome women's group meeting yesterday morning at Blackwater Cafe in Maple Plain. And I got to tell you, I, I I enjoy all time together with the women that I share my faith with here. But this was amazing to have a room full of people. We had the, their private room full of women yesterday and it really made my heart happy to have all of you together. And we'll do new things, continue to do new things and try new things. So if you didn't make it yesterday, please come anytime Welka is meeting because we appreciate having all of the women together. Absolutely, that is so awesome. All things made new, lots of good things happening here. The Men's Food and Fellowship has also been growing. The last Saturday meeting had eight or nine men there as well. Steve. Uh, if you're not in welcome, but you want your heart to be full, coming up we have Thanksgiving Baptist in the building for 30 plus years has been the uh, Thanksgiving Baptist people in need. So I want you to put that in the back of your head. Maybe you want to sponsor a family, maybe you want to donate and have a shot. Absolutely. Thank you, Steve. And I do have two additional announcements. I've been thinking about that part of worship that we call the prayers of the church, the prayers of the people. You are the church. You are the people. I'm one of them, but I'm not all of it. So I would like to, in the next couple of weeks, be trying to make that time of prayer different. So I will be inviting people to share a prayer during the prayers of the church or the prayers of the people. Or if you're someone who is like, I am not standing up and praying in church, if you want to write up a prayer that you would like to be, have be a part of the prayers of the people, then please do that. Let's um, work on being very inclusive of what our worship service looks like. Liturgy is called the work of the people, and again, that's not just me or the choir, that's all of us. So be thinking about what you might really desire that we would be praying for. And finally, I am grieved to have to announce that Eric Westland went home to heaven Friday evening about 7.45. He is the son-in-law of Carol Brown, our custodian, um, was fighting hard with cancer, young, in his 40s, I believe. So Carol wanted me to thank all of you for the support she's felt and for the people who stepped up and helped make the wedding on Saturday happen. And please hold her and Eric's wife, Jen, and their family in prayer in the coming days and weeks. Um, worship continues with confession and forgiveness on page one in our bulletins. Please stand as you are able. If it were easy to follow Jesus, we would not need to ask for forgiveness, but it is hard, hard to follow and serve, hard to love and to welcome. We come to confess the power of our sin and the sin of others in our lives. Because God shared forgiveness through Jesus Christ with us, we are made whole in Christ's death and resurrection. Through forgiveness, we are free to celebrate God's goodness and serve God's creation. We are forgiven by the power of Jesus Christ. We can celebrate and we can serve. Amen. Amen. We sing the response. It is number 814, but it's also printed in your bulletin on page 2.
prayer for the day is printed on page two in our bulletins. Let us pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to what lies ahead, we may follow the way of your commandments and receive the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, 
You lack one thing. Go and sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but for God, for God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there, was, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, and fields with persecutions, and the age to come eternal life. But, mit, but many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated, and I invite children to come up for children's time. Thank you for coming up this morning. How was Sunday school? Great answer. So what did I bring with me this morning? What is this? It's a bottle, a water bottle. You're right. What's in the bottle? Nothing right now. Or air. You're right. If you said air or you thought air, you were right. This bottle is filled with air. That's why you can feel air coming out of the bottle when I squirt you. So what do you think would happen if, see if I can do this very carefully. No laughing over there in the choir section, I hear that. If I fill this bottle with water, then here's a hard question, what's it going to be full of? Wow, you guys are so smart. Good answer. Now what is this bottle full of? Water. Do I have to prove it to you? No, good answer as well. Whatever is in this bottle is going to come out of the bottle, right? And that's a little bit like what Jesus was telling us in the, the gospel reading, the Bible story that I just read. The story was about a young man who was rich, who had lots of stuff and lots of money. And he came to Jesus and said, what do I need to do to be saved, to be loved and forgiven? What do I need to do to be sure I'm going to heaven? And Jesus said, go and sell all your stuff and give the money to the poor. The rich man is really disappointed and kind of worried because how can I do that, he wonders. I have a lot of stuff. The Bible also says Jesus loved this rich young man. So I don't think Jesus meant that the man should have nothing. I'm pretty sure Jesus knows that we need food and clothes and a place to live. And I also think that Jesus knows it's nice to have some toys or games or some fun stuff as well, don't you think? But here's what I think. If our lives and our time are all the way filled up with money and stuff, and that's what we're worrying about, how to get more money, how to get more stuff, how to have everything we want, and our lives are all filled up with that, then where is the room for God's love? And where is the space for loving and caring for other people? Just like this bottle, whatever we're filled up with is what's going to come out. So I think Jesus wants us to remember that no matter how much stuff we have, we can't do anything that will save us, that will make God love and forgive us, that will make sure we go to heaven. 
but we don't have to because we also heard that nothing is impossible with God. It is God's Holy Spirit that gives you love and fills you up with grace. And as long as you are praying and looking for ways to share that love with others, and you let God's Holy Spirit fill you up with love and hope and joy, and you find ways to share that with other people, then that's what will be coming out of you. Not because of what we do, but because of what God can do for us. Let's pray about that. Dear God, Thank you for Jesus who fills us with love that we can share with others. And thank you for loving us and caring about our whole life, even our stuff and our money. In Jesus' name we always pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Thank you for coming up. Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today I'm grateful to a guy named Jonathan Davis, a pastor and a blogger, who was also a classmate of mine at Luther Seminary, and to David Loos, a pastor who was also one of my seminary preaching professors. I'm grateful for the work and the words they've shared that are part of my message this morning. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go. Sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. And children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Now just before I was ordained, a good friend warned me, just don't preach about money. If you do, people will not want to give anything. Being that money is one of the things Jesus talks about the most in his ministry, I kind of feel like my hands are a little tied. If we're to be Jesus people, then it seems like we need to talk about money. But I'll make you a promise, I'm not asking for any of your money today. I must confess that I have more than once, only half jokingly said, being rich doesn't solve all your problems, but I'd sure be willing to give it a try. Or we've joked during particularly hard times, money doesn't buy happiness. True, but I bet whoever said that wasn't struggling to make ends meet. But then along comes Jesus and this story, and it seems like being rich is actually a bad thing. I can remember wondering as a fairly young child when I heard this story, well then does having money make people bad? Maybe it was good that I knew my parents worked pretty hard to have even just enough for much of my earliest years of my life. It certainly looked different for them in later years. Jesus said it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. So I thought, good thing we were never even close to rich. It was a hard text to hear back then. And it's still hard today because, because whether it feels like it or not when it's time to pay the bills, we are all still quite rich. I once heard a statistic some time ago now that if there is one TV in your neighborhood, you are among the 5% richest people in the world. I guess everyone sitting here and probably those of you listening online as well are rich. More recently I read that if you have any money in the bank, anything in your wallet, and, a, and spare change in a dish someplace, then you are among the top 8% of the world's wealthy. Wow. No wonder we have, through the years, wanted to make this story easier, softer on our ears. I've heard it said that Jesus doesn't really want you to go and sell all your stuff. He just wants you to appreciate it more. Just show your parents a little more gratitude when they buy you that new iPhone. Just say a longer prayer before dinner. Really mean it when you say grace and thank God for your food. Jesus doesn't really mean give away your stuff. But there is a story about a well-known preacher, a Methodist bishop, Will Williman, who received a panicky phone call on Monday morning from a parishioner. 
The man said that his daughter, Anne, had just decided to drop out of pharmacy school. She had come home for the weekend and, in fact, had been to church just that Sunday. Everyone was shocked by her decision, so they asked the preacher to give her a call and talk some sense into her. So he did. He called up Anne and reminded her about how hard she had worked to get where she was and that she couldn't just throw it all away. What inspired this decision anyway, the preacher asked. Well, it was your sermon, Anne said. She talked about how she realized she was only in school to meet her own selfish needs and his sermon on God calling all of us to do something important in this life shook something loose in her. She remembered how much joy she had had in teaching migrant workers how to read one summer through a church program. She felt close to God then, and now she is leaving school because she wants to spend her life helping those people. Now look, Anne, the preacher said, it was just a sermon. Go and sell all your things and give them to the poor, Jesus said. Does Jesus really mean this, or is it just a sermon? This is a church. Of course we need to give. Give something. It actually reminds me of the joke Jerry shared this week. A $20 bill and a $1 bill met up and were talking. I haven't seen you around much, the $1 bill said to the $20 bill. Well, I've been having a great time. I've been on a cruise. I went to a ball game. I was at a concert. Everything just fabulous, said the $20 bill. Where have you been, the 20 then asked the $1 bill. It's always the same, said the $1 bill. Church, church, church. <laughs> but maybe that joke doesn't even belong in this message this morning because some have said this text is not about how much money you have or give. Not really. Instead, it is simply about how there is nothing you can do to earn your way into heaven. That we are all dependent on God's mercy to save us and bring us into eternal life. Rich or not, we are all sinners and in need of God's forgiveness and grace. We just need to remember that. Maybe that is what this text is all about. My friend Jonathan remembers when we were at seminary, every day parked in the parking lot was a big, bright, shiny white SUV. On the back was a bumper sticker that read, Don't let the car fool you. My treasure is in heaven. Ah yes, as long as you know your true treasure is in heaven, as long as you know you are saved by God's grace, what is wrong with having a couple of treasures here on earth? I like these understandings of this text, that I just need to appreciate my stuff more, and that I just need to remember that I am saved by grace. Because when I think about the text in these ways, my money never enters the picture at all. But what if this story actually is about money? About our money and its ability to make us sick? This rich man runs up to Jesus, kneels before him, and asks, What must I do to inherit eternal life? As David Loos reminds us in the Gospel of Mark, just about everyone who kneels before Jesus is sick and in need of healing. The leper kneels before Jesus, asking to be healed. Jairus, whose daughter is dying, kneels before Jesus. The woman who is hemorrhaging kneels before Jesus. And now this rich man, who has followed all the laws and wants nothing, kneels before Jesus. Which likely means this rich man is sick, heart sick, and in need of healing. He, along with every lottery winner, however much I might joke about it, has learned that having all the money in the world doesn't solve your problems. Maybe he has learned that you can lose yourself in making sure you are the smartest or the most beautiful or the one with the most toys. This man is lost and desperate. He realizes something is missing. He is not well, not well in his soul. And so this man comes to Jesus in order to be healed. And Jesus looked at the man and loved him. Looked at the man and loved him. Very few places in the Bible does it literally say Jesus loved someone. But maybe this man can't receive this love because he's already carrying so much, all of his stuff. And sometimes you can't accept what's being given to you unless you let go of what you already have. So Jesus asked this man to open his hands and give everything he has to the poor. 
Jesus must have known what the same known the same thing that recent studies are showing. Really, the only way money makes any of us happy is when we give it away. But the man walks away shocked and grieving because he had so many possessions. Was the man healed of his sickness? Did he do what Jesus said to do? I guess we may never know. I don't know if your money has the ability to make you sick. I don't know if you are longing for something more. And maybe to most of you, this doesn't exactly sound like good news. The idea that Jesus has his eye on our wallets and our purses and is looking at and watching what we do with them. Hmm. But maybe just the fact that Jesus is looking at us at all is the good news. Maybe what it says is that God really cares about this life, your life. And God actually cares about what you do with it. Which means what you do matters. And what you do with your life and your money matters. It matters to God and it matters to the world. Remember that this week. Each time you hand over some cash or a debit card or a credit card to buy something. Not because God looks at you as a judge. But because God looks at you and loves you. God looks at you and loves you. Not as a judge, as a God who loves more than we can ever imagine. A God wishing for you not just good behavior and a substantial bank account, but a whole heart and a full life. And money is part of our lives. So yes, the God who loves and cares about all parts of our lives also cares about our money and desires that that money too much or too little, not keep us from all that God desires our lives to be, all that our lives can be. Who then can be saved? No one, if it's up to us. But for God, all things are possible. So then we can be saved. We have been saved. We can, as the writer of Hebrews reminded us this morning, approach the throne of grace with boldness, not because of anything we've done, but because of Jesus, our high priest. Because of Jesus, nothing is impossible with God. I promised that I would not ask for your money today. And it's true, I won't. In fact, I want to give you money. Well, two of you at least. I need two brave volunteers who can be at church next week. Anybody? Hmm, nobody's that brave, huh? Oh, Jennifer is one. Anybody else? Joe, Jennifer and Joe, each of you after worship will get a $20 bill. And now you have an assignment. Go and use this money to gift something, anything, to a stranger who might need it. Maybe you pay for a stranger's meal at a restaurant, or maybe you leave it in an anonymous note to your neighbor telling them how much someone cares about them. Maybe you buy just a coffee or a pop at McDonald's and you leave it as a tip. But it must be given to a person, not a campaign or a fundraiser or even a charitable organization. And it must be a stranger. Why? Because this kind of giving will remind all of us that it doesn't matter who they are or what they've done in their life to deserve this or not to deserve this, no matter what. They are worth something to God. They are loved, and so are you. Amen. We sing our sermon hymn, 583, 583. You are welcome to stand as able, or you are equally welcome to remain seated.
May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Uniting God, you call forth different gifts in those who follow you. Encourage us to welcome diverse help and blessings of the whole church in teaching, preaching, prophecy, healing, and more. Bless our bishops, Anne and Elizabeth. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Nurturing God, you bring, you bring forth crops from the soil and bounty from the trees. Increase the produce of the land and bless all who toil in fields and orchards. Provide good working conditions and keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Empowering God, you offer compassion for those who are overlooked or forgotten. Open the hearts of local, national, and world leaders to show compassion and love for their neighbors. Provide safe places for sleep and rest for those who have no place to live. Sustain the ministries that offer food, clothing, and peace of mind. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Healing God, you share in our experiences and struggles and joys. We give you thanks for the gift of love that Mike and Sue have found. Their wedding was yesterday here at Lindale. We pray that the love they share will be strong and healthy, that they might be blessed with good health, and that their love might reflect your love. And we pray for those who are ill with COVID and for weary healthcare providers. We, we pray especially for Aiden Hewitt, a fifth grader here at Lindale, who is uh, living with COVID. He is doing well and feeling good as of a couple of days ago. We are grateful for that. Please walk with them in this time of quarantine. And we pray for the Simon family, neighbors of Lindale. Grant healing and hope when the path forward seems bleak in whatever way and for whatever reason. We pray especially for those we name now, aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Kathy, Lizzie, Nancy, Trent, Jake and Florence, Becky and her family, Kenny, David, Dick Johnson, as he nears the end of his journey on here on earth, as well as his wife, Mina, their children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Eternal God, we thank you for the lives of those who have died, especially Eric Westland, son-in-law of Carol Brown, our custodian. Grant peace and hope to his wife, Jen, and their entire family as they grieve. Make us confident in your promise of salvation. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please share God's peace with one another. Right now, that's a wave and a smile. God's peace be with all of you. We worship with our offering, and right now we are receiving offering in the back as you come in or go out. We invite those worshiping with us online to give using our website, lindalelutheranchurch.com, or mailing a gift to Lindale. Our address is available on our website. And now we stand as we are able, and we sing our offering response. It's printed in the bulletin, and we're grateful for Blake Ditch for sharing his gift of music this morning. Celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion, still not able to gather around the altar.
but you should have received your cup with the, the juice and the wafer as you came in. If you don't have one, please raise your hand and Jennifer is happy to bring that. After we have heard the words of institution and prayed the Lord's Prayer, we will pause for our music and then receive the, the elements and hear the blessing. So in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. People of God, this is the body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. shares their gift of music with us. Please stand as you are able for the blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Creator and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our sending hymn, God of grace and God of glory, number 705.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.